This video will introduce us to how to bring in a file into TracePro, analyze it, understand the output. We will be using the elliptical reflector example to do this video. Let's do a simple analysis with TracePro. First of all, a lot of people do lighting analysis with TracePro, so let's bring in an elliptical reflector type system with an arc lamp. To do this, I've created an existing system of an elliptical reflector, so I go to the File menu, I go to the Open Selection, and then I'm going to then browse for my elliptical reflector example. There we go, elliptical Double left mouse clicking automatically brings in this particular system. Now I'm going to zoom out and then orbit the view to get a good idea of what the system looks like. As we can see, we have an elliptical reflector, which is defined as an ellipse inside the program. We have a quartz bulb, which has electrodes, an arc lamp inside, and then an observation disk where we can look at the power output by this elliptical reflector. Now, we want to make sure that our reflector inside has been properly coated with a mirror finish. And as we can see, that's correct. This is also a spline surface that was defined using the Insert Reflector dialog. In this case, we can see that we can choose from different types of shapes, spherical, parabolic, elliptical, and hyperbolic. And we can specify the shape of this by specifying its length, diameter, or radius. In this case, we have an ellipse which has two focal lengths and a diameter. Now that we've created the elliptical reflector, and we have the system all in place, it should be an easy thing to go to the program, go to Ray Trace, and trace these rays. I've traced 100,000 rays here, which takes a little bit over a minute to trace the entire selection. Currently, we've selected only one wavelength, the middle visible, for this particular analysis. The light is emitting from the arc cylinder, and the program's status and ray trace progress shows us that we've traced over 30,000 rays as of this point. We can see the amount of time remaining to finish the ray trace and how much has elapsed. And there's a nice percentage counter as we go along along with a percentage bar. We can cancel the ray trace at any time, see the rays being traced, and then resume the ray trace at any point. As you can see, we start right from the point that we left off at, and the program will now click down to the final 50,000 rays. Now, what we're going to be looking at here are our radiance maps. That happens to be this icon, and the candela maps, which are shown over here. When we see rays on the screen, that's controlled by this particular icon, which turns the rays on and off for this particular simulation. Now, where we want to go is to first to see the power on different surfaces. In the program, we have the capability to specify that any surface in the analysis mode, and the analysis mode is selected from the ray trace menu. You see there are two different modes. The analysis mode uses a lot of memory, and the reason why it uses a lot of memory is because it keeps the information on every single surface, how much power, how many rays, if they were split on that surface, and so on. The simulation mode is much mess, less memory intensive because it only allows you to specify and see information on surfaces that you select as exit surfaces. All other surfaces are not tracked at that point in time. So we've seen every single surface in this particular system. So we can go right immediately to the inside of the reflector. We can click on the irradiance map icon and we can see the irradiance right on that particular surface. In fact, if we split the screen using this particular icon, the tile windows, we can see the system on the right, the inside of the reflector as the surface we want to see the irradiance map on, and then the output on that surface. Now we know the inside of the reflector is a curved surface, but what we're doing here is we're taking all of the information and we're compressing it to a plane at the vertex of the mirror. What would make a lot more sense here is if we went to the front edge over here on this particular reflector. I'm going to move the screen over and slightly zoom 
out, we see this is the power on this particular surface. We'll see that that surface is highlighted in black and here's the power on that particular surface. Anywhere I put the cursor, we can see the XYZ location over here and the amount of power on that particular surface. Okay? In this case we're in lux and we have about 144 lux in that particular portion. Now what's nice about the program is that we also have the capability to use the shift key and select a certain area. We can then go to the analysis menu and display only those rays that come from the reflector through the system and actually hit that particular area. So you can use TracePro to try to find out where areas of rays are coming from to the selected observation disk front in this case, which is the surface we have selected. So TracePro has a lot of this capability, the capability to see irradiance maps, where light's coming from, using the analysis display selected ray. If I turn this off and then turn the rays all back on, we'll see all the rays for this particular simulation. We can also use the analysis ray sorting to select only rays that hit the selected surface and then it will update those particular rays. We can also do it for particular wavelengths. We only have one here. and We can also do it for a percentage of the rays. Now make sure that you've selected the window that you want to see the rays in because if you're selecting the other window it will have a different result. So in this case if I do ray sorting to the selected surface for 1% of the rays, you will show me only a few of the rays that are going to select that surface. Now make sure that you have the display rays icon on to see those actual rays. So this is a very nice capability in the program. Remember, select the window that you want to see the rays in. If you select this window, you can use the display selected rays to show the region from here on this screen and vice versa if you select this screen by highlighting the blue bar in this location you can then do the ray sorting which allows us to look at selected surfaces or selected sources or the percentage of that. What's even nicer and what I like to use a lot happens to be the flux display range where I can specify that I only want to see the highest rays with the most maximum amount of power. The program will then go upgrade those. Now what happens here is that our ray colors in TracePro have quite a few options. As you see underneath analysis ray colors, we can select rays based on flux, wavelength, which source they come from, or we can set them all to one color. We see that right now, all rays between 70 to 100 percent are all going to be colored red, which I asked for in the rating sorting. So that's what we see here. Now we've looked at our irradiance and illuminance maps, we can look at candela maps. This is angular information. At this point in time, just go to the analysis, candela plot, and we can look at a polar isocandela plot of the light that strikes the surface. It looks very similar to the luminous plot because as we make this window just a tiny bit smaller, we can see that most of these rays are coming out of a small angular output to this particular surface. Now, if we, instead of selecting the target surface, now notice that we have quite a few candela options. And this is very important because right now I have this particular output for missed rays, which means the rays that go out and don't strike any other surface. If I do the same thing I did in the irradiance map option and selected certain rays, I could then come back and do the same thing that, as I do in the irradiance option to see only surfaces and output from those surfaces. So now that I have the incident rays selected over here, we're going to have a completely different answer when I look at things like the inside of the reflector for my particular reflector here, calculation. Let's go back there and make sure that we're using and applying that. And we can see now that we have light all the way out to 90 degrees outside as they're coming out of the onto that reflector. And there's a hole of course and that hole is going to be where the light's coming back and it's hitting that big huge green uh, arc portion of the, uh, the, the surface. Now another thing that we're going to see here is that the light is going to be quite a bit different on my observation disk as well because it's going to look a little bit different but not much. And then finally the arc lamp itself should almost be you know, going out in quite a bit of uh, angular range. So depending on what we're looking at here and how many rays that we have defined, we can see a varied amount of angular output. So there we go. There's the output on the arc lamp actually as it goes out uh, in terms of irradiance. So this ends this uh, portion of the tutorial. Thank you very much for watching the elliptical reflector tutorial. Thank you for attending our presentation. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to email us or call us at 978-486-0766, extension 4.
And please remember, we have other videos on the way.